So as it goes up the ramp and it's, it's climbing and it's getting higher and higher up the ramp, we know that its kinetic energy is changing. It's, it's getting reduced. It's getting smaller and smaller. And eventually it comes to rest. At whatever point, all of its kinetic energy has been converted to potential energy. I don't think that part's particularly hard. Now, I have some hard questions to ask about this. Things like, how would this be different if there was no friction? Would it go higher up on the ramp? Or would it not go as high on the ramp? And how would this be different if I had a block that was maybe going at the same speed but wasn't rolling? Would it go higher up on the ramp or not as high up on the ramp? And then there's the other questions like, well, what if it was a disc versus a ring versus a ball? How would those things affect what's happening? But I'm going to ask a, a much simpler question. I'm going to break you into your groups and in this point right here, this middle part right here, I want you to tell me what the forces are acting on the object and in what direction. Okay? That's what I'm asking for. What are the forces acting on the object and in what direction? My cues from one of you guys. Give me one of the forces. Make it easy on you. All right, go ahead. Way to go gonna pick one pick that one it's easy all right somebody else gotta give me another one bring it all right way to go all right we've handled the uh the low-hanging fruit as i like to say we've got those those are good now the frictional force All right, I'm looking forward to it. And here's what I was gonna see, because we have two choices, don't we? The friction's either this way or this way. Those are the only two options. Now, before we go any further than this, if you think it goes up the ramp, then, um, in the uh, little window there, put a thumbs up. If you think it goes down the ramp, put a thumbs down. So we're not evenly split, I've got 20 people that thinks it goes down the ramp and 10 people who think it goes up the ramp. So the clear winner, I guess if we do it by vote, is up the ramp. I'm sorry, is down the ramp by a two to one margin. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment, guys. And trust me when I say this is counterintuitive. It's going to be hard for you to, and there's a reason why I haven't brought this up, you know, yet, because I, I want you to be able to nail the other stuff first. But the wheel is spinning this way. Can we all agree that the wheel is slowing down on its way up the ramp? All right, so with that agreement, that means that the angular speed has to be becoming a smaller and smaller number. Which of those two frictional forces would be causing a torque that would slow the wheel down? So if we, and here's what, here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna go to something, we'll go back to the whole ramp scenario here. The actual frictional force on an object like this is going to be up the ramp. Now this frictional force does act to slow the wheel down. It causes that torque, but in the net force equation, if I was just to look at the net force on the object, if up the ramp is positive, then it would be friction minus mg sine theta equals ma. Friction acts as a positive force up the ramp. Now, I still think this is going to be bigger, and I think the wheel is going to be slowing down. So I think the acceleration here will be negative. 
but the frictional force is up the ramp. At the same time, the net torque, based on my direction, the way I've drawn things, my net torque will be I alpha, but the torque is going to be in a direction to attempt to slow the wheel down. There's no doubt. So I would have minus F R equals I alpha. That's assuming a fulcrum at the center. If I did the fulcrum here, then I would have to reevaluate and change my I. You have to pick one of these. It doesn't matter which one you pick, but as discussed this morning with um, a few folks, most people find it more comfortable to put the fulcrum at the center. They just feel more natural putting it there. And it, there is no difference. It's the exact same thing. So I'll put it at the center for us in this discussion. So not an easy question, I don't think, but I think it's one that begs a little bit of, of um, perseverance. So what we're going to do here is we're going to switch a little bit in that I'm going to set this up as a problem. Th this was similar to what I was going to give you as a quiz, by the way. I'm going to set this up as a problem, and I'm going to ask some distinct questions that I would like you to field about this question. Okay? And then I'm going to ask you to try it out tonight on regular paper and submit it to Edsby as a practice sometime before Monday. Is that okay? Does that give you plenty of time? Is there any problem with that? Okay. So... Here are the questions, and I'm recording this, and I'm recording it separate from, um, from Zoom so that you can review it, and I don't have to feel bad about having recorded somebody's face or something on Zoom. So if I was to ask this question, and I will, I'm going to go to a brand new window, I'm going to talk about all the things I'd like you to be able to do, and, and there are several. First, let's assume that it's a smooth transition from the horizontal part to the vertical part. So there's no bumpiness and losing of energy because it's bumping around. Let's say that I have a disc of mass capital M. It's a disc, so that means its moment of inertia is 1 half m r squared so it has a radius of r. It's traveling at v. It's going to encounter a ramp of angle theta. So everything that I put in yellow can be part of your answer. Okay? With this information, I would like for you to find the following. How high above the ground? That's this dotted line. Does it travel? What length along the ramp? Those three questions, you can solve those using either energy or force. Either will work. However, you will probably need trig and kinematics to get some of them. 
but then I'm going to ask question D. I would like to know the size and the direction of the frictional force. Now, for that one, you've probably only got one method, and that's going to be net force and net torque. Why don't you just give it a try, okay? This isn't a, a truly terrible question. It's, it's not particularly hard. If you're having trouble with it tomorrow, I will just pop in tomorrow for some tutoring, and I'll be happy to help you out. But I would like you to submit it sometime on Monday. I just want to see you work on it, okay? I got a question up in the chat, so give me a second to pull my chat window up. Ugh, that's not the chat window. Um, is it rotating at the start? Yes. Let's assume that it's rolling at the start. So I, I didn't make that clear. So it has some speed, but the only variable I want you to use is the linear speed, V. So if you need the angular speed, you will have to write it as, you know, V over R. Okay? Now, A and B are the same question, right? It's, you're just, it's a triangle. So once you find the height, you use a triangle to get the length. So I don't want anybody stressing there. C and D are harder. You can get C from kinematics if you want to use energy. But D, you're going to have to use forces. So this problem will force you to use both forces and energy. There's a way to find the friction without using forces, really, kind of, but it's much harder. Just use forces. Any questions about what I'm asking you to do? Wesley said rolling without slipping. Is that okay? The, the, um, the my AP, I'm going to scrap that assignment and just make a, make a new one that has the stuff that you can submit pictures. If you've done any of the ones that were without pictures, if you send them to me, I will use them as extra credit. So I don't know if you, how many of you have in the, in the participant window, how many of you have started working on the ones that don't have pictures? Has anybody? A few of you? Okay. So yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take them. I don't want, your, your work is not wasted is what I want to say. But I will redo the assignment in such a way that it is, it allows you to submit right through my APs to make it as easy as possible. All right. Now tomorrow I will be available for tutoring. Um, there's, uh, I have a meeting sometime during the day, but I don't think it's till the afternoon. So I'm just going to be available for tutoring most of the day. So if you have trouble with this, don't stress on it. I want you to do well. We can sit down one on one. Well, you in your house and me in my cave, and we'll uh, we'll figure it out together. Okay. All right, guys. Have a lovely weekend if I don't see you tomorrow. Enjoy some outside time. Enjoy some time with family. You're sure getting a lot of that now. And uh, I'll see you all in a bit. Always a joy. Bye-bye, guys. can ignore everything except for just an object spinning in space. This is all about the object, and it's spinning this way. If I'm going to have to apply a force here that will cause a torque to stop the wheel's motion, would I push it that way? Would that slow it down? Yeah, it would not. If I want to slow it down, I would have to apply the force in this direction. It's the only way I could slow the wheel down. Now, this doesn't seem like it matches with what you would expect. But remember, this object isn't sliding. Remember? It's not a box sliding up the ramp. It's a wheel climbing up the ramp. Right? It's trying to dig in and climb. In fact, this force is helping it make its way up the ramp. This is why a wheel that's spinning will travel farther up a ramp than an object that's sliding at the same speed. Because it's got not just its inertia, but its rotation 
to help it go up the ramp, which means there has to be a force on the object up the ramp to help propel it. So